This problem is about kinetics and reaction rates. You can find more AP Chem resources right here. The table below shows the results from a rate study of the reaction X plus Y yields Z. Starting with known concentrations of X and Y in experiment 1, the rate of production of Z was measured. If the reaction is first order with respect to X and second order with respect to Y, what would be the initial rate of formation of Z in experiment 2? The AP exam often asks rate law and kinetics questions like this in the multiple choice question. You're usually given a table with initial concentrations and rates for a few different experiments like this. And these questions usually focus on what we call the method of initial rates. We look for changes in the initial concentration of a reactant, and we see what effect those changes in concentration have on the initial rate of reaction. So here, for experiment one, we're given concentrations of X and Y. The rate for this set of concentrations is R. Then in experiment two, the concentrations change, and we need to determine the new rate and figure out how it will compare to R. There are a couple ways to do this. We'll start out with sort of a logic-based approach that I know a lot of students use, but then we'll talk about some more foolproof approaches that use math and algebra, and I, I actually really like those better. However, uh, no matter how we're gonna choose to solve this, we'll wanna start out by writing the rate law for this, uh, for this reaction. This question tells us that the reaction is first order with respect to X and second order with respect to Y. That means that the rate equation is going to be rate equals K times X to the first for first order, but of course we don't write the first there, times Y to the second for second order. So there's our rate equation. Now, we're gonna look at the changes in concentration between experiment one and experiment two and see how they'll affect the rate. X goes from 0.4 to 0.2. So the concentration of X is cut in half. Now, X is first order. And that means that whatever change we make to the concentration, will trigger the exact same change to the rate. So if we cut the concentration in half, we cut the rate in half. So we can kind of say that changes in X will contribute a one half reduction in rate compared to experiment one. Now let's look at Y. Between experiment one and experiment two, the concentration of Y doubles. Now we know that y is second order. So whatever change happens to the concentration, we have to square that change to get the change in rate. So we doubled the concentration, so 2 squared equals 4. So the rate increases by 4 times. We'll put that over here. This change to y contributes a four times increase to the rate. Now, multiply these two changes together for x and y, and we get a two times increase compared to the original rate, which corresponds to choice D, 2R. Now, this method that we worked through is, it's okay, but it's a shortcut. Uh, the math isn't perfectly clear, and it gets particularly hazy when two reactants change as opposed to just one. If you use a logic method like this, make sure you really understand what you're doing. Otherwise, here's some techniques that are a little bit more methodical and straightforward. Okay, so since these numbers are so simple, a really clear way to solve this is to just plug values 
into the rate equation, get some actual numbers, and compare them. Okay? We'll start out solving for r, which is the rate here for experiment one. We're just going to plug these values into the rate equation, which we have over here. So r equals k times x times y. And remember, of course, y is squared because the reaction is second order with respect to y. Work through this. 0.1 squared is 0.1. Do the math, and it gives us a final answer of 0.004k. Okay, that's R for experiment one. Now we'll figure out the rate for experiment two. We'll call that R prime. And we'll use the rate equation again. We pull this down here, and now we'll just plug in the concentrations from experiment two. So we have x, 0.2, y, 0.2, and squared because it's second order. Work through the math, square that, 0.04, multiply this together, and we get uh, 0.008k for r prime. Now we have solid numbers that we can compare. And you can see right away that r prime, the new rate for experiment number two, is clearly two times r, again corresponding to d. And now finally, you could set up an algebraic equation like this with r over r prime on one side of the equation, and on the other side, the rate equations. The uh, rate equation for experiment one is on top because it corresponds with r. Uh, the rate equation for experiment uh, number two is on the on the bottom in the denominator because it corresponds with r prime. Work through this algebraically, and if you solve for r prime, you will clearly get that r prime equals 2r, again, choice d. So, anyway, those are just a few of the strategies that you can use to solve a kinetics uh, or initial rate problem, just like this.